The Ford Ranger should have easily been the most popular mid-sized pickup truck, especially after the redesign. It has fantastic towing capacity, a literally shrinking F-150 styling, a great interior, and a very traditional approach to the pickup truck concept. However, it wasn't. In fact, quite the contrary. The Ranger remains one of the worst-selling pickup trucks in its segment, and even those who bought it mention numerous issues they've experienced. So let's take a closer look at where the Blue Oval went wrong as we explain what on earth is going on with the Ford Ranger. Eco Boost? More like Eco Boom. Unfortunately, one of the biggest problems with the Ford Ranger is its engines, or the 2.7-liter EcoBoost, to be more precise. This engine, which has previously been well-proven amongst all kinds of vehicles, was upgraded by Ford a few years back. And by upgrade, we mean a severe downgrade. You see, Ford has, in all their genialness, decided to replace the timing chain with a timing belt for the 2.7-liter. Now we know what you're thinking. Well, what's the problem with that? A belt just needs to be changed more often. No big deal. And we would have agreed with you. If the belt in question wasn't a wet belt. For those of you who don't know, a wet belt is a belt that is soaked in oil, which, according to manufacturers, helps prolong its lifespan over a regular belt. And as such, such a belt requires less maintenance and needs to be changed less frequently. At least, in theory, it does. In reality, this system has been developed, and don't let Ford hear us say this, to make the engine go kaboom after a couple of years of usage. Why? Well, if you don't use the correct oil, the belt starts degrading way faster than expected. And by the right oil, we don't mean the right oil type, but the actual manufacturer that Ford recommends. And since most of us don't really care about the oil manufacturer, but just the oil type, it's inevitable that the belt will give in eventually and disintegrate, practically grenading your engine. Now, this can be prevented by servicing the engine regularly and replacing the wet belt like it was a regular one. However, this is very costly, and it almost rivals the price of replacing the timing chain, which will only be done maybe once in an engine's lifetime. Honestly, we're flabbergasted by the fact that Ford decided to overcomplicate the engine and offer a solution to a problem that didn't exist. To be more precise, they made a problem out of nothing. At least the 2.3 liter has the chain, though. And frankly, we just tell you to stick with it instead of upgrading to the 2.7. It's a better power plant through and through. However, even it has been met with all kinds of minor issues and problems. Minor but irritating engine issues. Both the 2.3 and the 2.7 have been riddled with all kinds of smaller issues, all of which are probably the result of Ford's hyper-production of their vehicles. As a result, buyers have commonly encountered issues related to the oil pump, which manifests itself through an audible rattle accompanied by the oil pressure light coming on. This is an issue that happens because of premature wear and tear of the parts used within the fuel pump or those parts being made to a lower standard from the get-go. In addition to that, owners have also reported turbocharged failure, which, albeit not commonplace, is still a thing to look out for, especially if you're buying a used Ford Ranger. There's also been mention of crankshaft damage, which manifests through a rapid and significant drop in fuel economy. The crankshaft being worn down is more of a 2.7 issue than the 2.3. However, you should be on the lookout for both, as with Ford's recent dip in quality, no powertrain is truly safe. Finally, but most commonly, the fuel injectors have commonly been prone to failure, which you can recognize by very unsteady idling or engine misfires, especially when the engine is cold. This will almost always be accompanied by an engine light. However, if you notice this behavior and don't see an engine light on while secondhand shopping, we wouldn't rule this issue out yet because the seller might have just turned off the light this is a very costly repair, to be sure, and be on the lookout for it. That said, the same behavior can be seen if the fuel filter is clogged and dirty, so also be sure to check that out before writing the issue off as an injector failure. Transmission Issues Why in the world do we keep allowing Ford to make transmissions? 
they are literally completely clueless about what makes a good gearbox. First, the 10-speed is fundamentally troubled. It has 10 gears for God's sake. Who in the world needs that? A 10-speed gearbox will almost always be way too indecisive for either utility or performance. Sure, you'll be able to get quite a bit more MPG than with a 6-speed and an 8-speed due to the engine working at lower RPM. However, the power band in gear will be far narrower than with those. In addition to that, the transmission isn't even that reliable. Some owners have mentioned that the transmission can, from time to time, jerk while shifting, violently shaking while doing so, like when shifting with a manual and suddenly lifting your foot from the clutch. Additionally, it has also been noted that it can change gears at a very sluggish pace, which isn't good news, as the gearbox will run out of oomph pretty fast because of the gear ratio. There's also been mention of the transmission shifting to a completely illogical gear mid-drive, with one owner having experienced the gearbox dropping to first gear while going 70 miles per hour. All of this just makes us wonder why Ford didn't just outsource the transmission production to ZF, like every normal and sane company does, as they are, after all, the kings of transmission. A truck for a different market. Unfortunately, as much as we like Ford, it's very evident that the Ranger was primarily developed for a different market, namely the European and Australian markets. First of all, the previous and the current generation of the trucks share the same platform, meaning that the all-new generation isn't really all-new, just heavily facelifted. In addition to that, the Ford Ranger also has quite a bit of European heritage, as this platform has been made in collaboration with Volkswagen for their Amarok truck. Now, sure, because of this adaptation to the European market, and because of any real competition to it, the Ranger has been selling pretty well on the old continent. It has also been met with generally positive reviews, and was and is pretty well adored in Australia, which has a much more developed mid-sized pickup truck culture than we do. However, in the US, full-size pickup trucks still reign dominant over mid-sized ones, and by the looks of it, that won't change anytime soon which is one of the reasons why the Ranger hasn't skyrocketed in sales for the past few years. Despite being a cheaper alternative to the F-150, its large brother remains the best-selling vehicle in the US, despite the economic crisis. Plus, the Ranger wasn't even present at the US market before 2019, which means that most mid-sized truck buyers aren't well accustomed to it and don't trust it, especially since the competition offers very compelling choices of other mid-sized pickup trucks. That brings us to the most important reason why the Ranger isn't as popular as Ford expected it to be. Alternatives are simply better. Like it or hate it, Ford's biggest mistake with the Ford Ranger was that they tried to make a jack-of-all-trades kind of truck. They tried to fit a full-size truck's soul in a mid-sized truck, and that simply didn't work all that well. Don't get us wrong, the Ranger is a compelling truck, and you won't make a mistake if you buy it. It's just, well, it's competition just does individual things so much better than the Blue Oval's offering. For example, the Jeep Gladiator is a far better off-roader than the Ford Ranger, primarily because of its off-road heritage and the platform it shares with the Wrangler. The Chevrolet Colorado offers a better packed package, with more standard features and a nicer design for a drastically smaller price, while also being a very comparable jack-of-all-trades vehicle. The GMC Canyon is much better built, and has a much more premium feel on the inside, while the Nissan Frontier has the same character and features as the Ranger, only for a smaller price and, in our opinion, with a better engine, as it uses a naturally aspirated V6 lump. However, the biggest threat to the Ford Ranger is nobody else than the Toyota Tacoma, which is also a vehicle that aims to be good at everything. However, due to its more sophisticated suspension, better reliability track record, and much nicer design, both inside and out, it seemingly does the whole being good at everything thing much better than the Ranger. That said, you don't need to worry too much about the Ranger. It is an excellent pickup truck, and while it might not be the best of the bunch, it's still a great option, especially if you take into consideration that it's the third best vehicle in its class when it comes down to towing and payload capacity. Just remember not to go for the 2.7 EcoBoost if you're looking for a proper workhorse, though.